Uh, as Americans become educated about evolution, they're going to see some real advantages to understanding this because there are some actual practical advantages to being able to make choices about things in our lives that come right out of evolutionary theory. Just for example, we know from evolutionary theory that bacteria can build up a resistance to drugs. And this happens rather quickly. We now have uh, bacteria like Staphylococcus that are resistant to almost every drug that we throw at them. There's just a few drugs left in our arsenal. And if we run out of antibiotics to throw at these uh, bacteria, we are in trouble because we're going to be right back where we were a hundred years ago with infections basically out of control. Now this is uh, evolution in action. These bacteria are evolving this drug resistance. Knowing that, intelligent Americans can choose not to throw to use too much antibiotics, to use antibiotics in animal feed, for example. This is a, a perfect way to get drug resistance to evolve. So here's an intelligent vote that can be done. Should we uh, have free use of antibiotics in animal feed? Should we just give drugs away to uh, anybody that wants them, as is the case in other countries? Or would it be better to be cautious about this and understand that bacteria will evolve resistance to drugs? See, that's the better way to uh, think about uh, such an issue. Pragmatic, um, pragmatically interesting events uh, where evolution plays a role are many, and some are good, some are not so good, some are outright bad. And a bad one has to do with the resistance of uh, many bacteria to antibiotics. When antibiotics started to be used in the 1940s and 50s, the physicians who were using them, they were not thinking in evolutionary terms. So they will give one antibiotic, say penicillin, was the most commonly used, which was very, very effective. But they didn't take into account that mutations exist in the hundreds and hundreds of millions, and that muta did I say, I, I said that bacteria exist in the hundreds and hundreds of billions, and that mutations occurred, although rarely, when you have so many bacteria, that one bacteria is likely to have one mutation that makes it resistant to penicillin. So the individual got cured, but then the next time that the conditions were unfavorable for that person to become ill again, that is for the bacteria to start to multiply. Now, the bacteria that this individual had inside were now resistant to penicillin because the penicillin can, had killed the immense, ma immense majority of bacteria, but not the very few which had had mutations that made them resistant to the penicillin. So now penicillin, letter by letter, became ineffective. And as you know, we don't use penicillin anymore. And so it happened with many other antibiotics. Now physicians, now is f for several decades, have learned about evolution and take evolution into account. So typically now when people are given an antibiotic, it's actually not one antibiotic, it's typically three. And moreover, individuals are told, sick people are told, keep taking the antibiotic until you finish the dosage. The reason for that is as follows, you see, you have mutations that make the bacteria resistant to a particular antibiotic. But those occur in with, occurred with a probability of one in many hundreds of million. So if you have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of bacteria in your organism when one, when one is sick, there are going to be quite a few bacteria who are going to be, which will be resistant to one particular antibiotic because of mutation. But those bacteria will not, resistant, will, will not be resistant to the second antibiotic because these mutations occurred at random in different bacteria. So by using three antibiotics, one makes sure that all the bacteria died. 
and very importantly, that no bacteria resistant to one particular of the antibiotics survives. So the same antibiotics can be used the next time. And the reason why the doctor wants you to keep taking the antibiotics is precisely related to that. They want to get rid of all the bacteria that might be resistant to one or the other antibiotic. If an individual starts to feel better and stops taking the antibiotics, then still may have a substantial population of bacteria, still many, many, many millions. So you have some surviving that may, may be resistant to one or the other. You take the three antibiotics and you take them to the end, no resistant bacteria remain, and then the antibiotics can be used again. Um, take, you know, epidemics, which now we are concerned about the possibility now of a new kind of flu, avian flu. Well, take the worst epidemic, probably, or the worst scourge, scourge of mankind, which is malaria. Malaria affects uh, 500 million to 600 million people every year. You know, this 10% of the human population get sick and seriously ill with very high fevers every year. And several million children die every year as a consequence of malaria. Now, evolution has allowed us to understand how malaria spread from a very small nucleus in tropical Africa through all the tropics in throughout the world, and it has become such a major disease. So evolution allows us to understand many important processes in life, not only how organisms come about, but things like epidemics, things like medical treatments, and many others.